So the iliotibial band, the ITB, one of the most controversial structures in physiotherapy. But when patients present with pain around the lateral hip, is it due to tightness of the ITB? Should we be stretching this structure or should we be doing something else? If you're ready to find out, let's dive in. So everyone, let's dive into the iliotibial band, one of the most controversial structures in physiotherapy and in anatomy. The first thing to mention about the ITB is that it is not a muscle. It is not a contractile structure. It does not contain any contractile fibers. So therefore, whereas we see muscles around the body contracting in order to produce movement, this structure doesn't actually produce movement. And that makes it really important when we consider its function later. Instead, we would describe the iliotibial band as a thick connective fascia and we can see where it connects to now. So it originates at the iliac crest of the ilium, as we can see here. And it is said to be a continuation of the gluteus maximus muscle, as we can see here, and the tensor fasciolata muscle, as we can see here. It then runs down the lateral leg before it inserts at the knee, more specifically into a point called Gerdes tubercle at the anterior lateral aspect of the tibia. Okay, so that's the anatomy. Why are we talking about the ITB? Well, in physiotherapy practice, we commonly see patients who have pain around the lateral hip. And there are two ways in which it may have been most commonly treated in the past when patients had lateral hip pain. First of all, it was considered the right thing to do to stretch the ITB. It was perceived that by stretching it, we would be able to lengthen those fibers and therefore reduce this feeling of tightness that patients would have around the lateral hip. Or the other option was foam rolling, which actually does tend to be a common treatment thought process today, where it was thought that by compressing the iliotibial band and moving pressure along it, we would also be able to lengthen it. However, research from Chowdhury et al. back in 2008 suggested otherwise, as they highlighted that to lengthen the ITB by 1% would take 9,000 newtons of force. Can you imagine how much force it would take to genuinely lengthen the ITB by 10%, 20%? Not possible within a standard physiotherapy clinic, I'm sure you can imagine. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we should stop thinking of the ITB as the main structure to focus on when patients have pain around the lateral hip. As more recently, it's thought that these patients are likely to be suffering with a gluteal tendinopathy. That is a tendinopathy of the gluteus minimus and gluteus medius tendons, perhaps because the ITB is compressing down on these tendons during excessive ranges of hip adduction. Therefore, rather than thinking about stretching and lengthening the ITB, we now most commonly practice to provide a tendinopathy rehab program for the glute med and glute min. So we're going to be thinking about exercises that gradually load these tendons, starting in a hip abduction position and gradually moving into hip adduction in order to withstand the forces that are needed in order to allow those tendons to function. So, Instead of thinking about stretching, perhaps we need to think more about strengthening when we have patients with lateral hip pain. But what about foam rolling? Can't we do that? Well, yes, of course we can. And there's no harm at all being done by doing foam rolling on the ITB. But I think we really need to be honest with patients and explain that whilst it can help on a day-to-day -day basis to reduce pain at that specific time, it isn't the long-lasting solution that we now know that a gluteal tendinopathy needs. So by all means foam roll, but remember, it's not the whole story. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to our channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got loads of brilliant resources on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio. And if you want more information on gluteal tendinopathies and how to treat them as a physiotherapist, you can find a video above where you can learn all about that. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.